Welcome back to Harville. This is going to be fun. It's Powell versus Cheney. Former Secretary of State Colin Powell issued a clear smackdown of Dick Cheney's attacks on President Obama. And he said the former vice president is wrong to suggest that President Obama and his administration have jeopardized our national security. Let's watch. My bottom line answer is the nation is still at risk. Terrorists are out there. They are trying to get through. But to suggest that somehow we have become much less safer because of the actions of the administration, I don't think they're borne out by the facts. Well, General Powell also leveled Cheney's arguments for waterboarding and those military commissions. Here's what he said to Cheney's recent prediction that Barack Obama will be a one-term president. Uh, we'll see whether Mr. Obama is a one-term president or not, but I would caution my Republican friends that he's got three years to go. And in that three years, the American people are going to want to see some progress and not just claims that this guy's out of office and we're going to do everything to destroy him or that somehow he is a socialist taking over the country. Well, so who wins this face off? Clarence Page, the Chicago Tribune columnist, and Michael Isakoff is Newsweek's investigative reporter and an MSNBC contributor. Michael, why is it, why is this happening? Why is Powell? Well, let's going start with Dick Cheney, Cheney the man yeah. who I often nicely call the troll. But the fact is, why is he out out there trashing so hard? Why didn't he just retire? He had his eight years as vice president. He's like, like a turret gun guy. He's like a, a rear gun. Right. Right. You know, he craves vindication. Tail gunner. He wants, you know, he wants the, the, the world to think that he was right about everything. He's never acknowledged being wrong about anything. But he was just a dutiful um, public servant of President uh, George W. Bush, right? No, in fact, he, 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 went, those were his policies? he went pretty far in the, in, in the last uh, interview he gave on uh, ABC uh, in making clear that he opposed much of what the Bush administration did in its second term, that he was in yeah. constant battle battle with them and as he uh, uh, conceded he lost quite a few battles on many of these very same issues so his real quarrel is with the president he used to serve George W Bush on a lot of this rather than with Barack Obama General Powell despite the fact a lot of people including I guess me were disappointed that he wasn't able to wield his strength we thought he would have a secretary of state in uh, you know, uh, what's the right word? Tempering mm -hmm. the hawkish tendencies of that administration. He has certainly come back and tried to rectify that. You could, you could call this a duel of uh, two men trying to vindicate themselves as far as their historic, uh, their legacy and history is concerned. Uh, Dick Cheney uh, wants to distance himself uh, from his former boss, who had already distanced himself from Cheney during his uh, the second term right. of the, the last four years. Uh, Colin Powell, meanwhile, uh, the one big blot on his record is that he went to the United Nations nations and persuaded people. He was the most persuasive voice on justifying our invasion of Iraq and he has plainly regretted it and uh, has has of late been uh, showing himself to be once again a man in the sensible center as he yeah, referred to it. Right. But also a soldier. He has re re right. regrouped himself as a general, not as a secretary of state. If you look at his, well let me ask you the question. Fighting to defend uh, uh, against getting rid of waterboarding, opposing waterboarding, opposing Gitmo, making very strong pro-soldier statements that could sound liberal if he weren't a soldier, but he's basically giving a soldier's position on the Geneva Conventions. Look, these are positions he took when he was in the Bush administration itself. I mean, he fought with Cheney on things, and he was a reluctant uh, a warrior on Iraq. He, he, he expressed strong reservations about it at times, right. didn't take there a strong is. stand, but he did. I want you to get to my house. Because Powell is really out there. Here he is. Here is. He said the Bush administration actually stopped using waterboard. Let's listen. Waterboarding. I don't know where the claim comes that we are less safe. The point is made that, well, we don't waterboard anymore or use extreme interrogation techniques. Most of those extreme interrogation techniques and waterboarding were done away with in the Bush administration. And they've been made officially done away with uh, in this current administration. Michael. Yeah, he's absolutely correct about that. The last time they waterboarded was like 2003. Uh, but of course, Cheney always wanted to keep the book open on this. He always pushed for more of it. More uh, torture. At, uh, yeah, and there were other enhanced interrogation techniques that went pretty far uh, as well. So the sleep Describe some. Uh, there's a, a rather graphic description in this Justice Department report that just got released on Friday about sleep deprivation and how they actually accomplished, how they kept people awake. awake. Shackling 
holding them uh, to, uh, above their heads uh, with chains, forcing them nude, wearing diapers, keeping them on their feet for hours on end. That's that was what sleep deprivation. It's sitting on meant. a stool. That if you fall off the stool, right. if you if you fall asleep, you lose your balance. Yeah, I mean it's pretty graphic stuff. And if people fully understood what was going on, here's, might see here's why a hero of a lot of Americans, especially those right. on the right or center right. Here's General Petraeus. He was opposed. He is also opposed to enhanced interrogation techniques like waterboarding. Here he is on Meet the Press. I have always uh, been on the record. In fact, since 2003. Uh, with the concept of living our values. Uh, and I think that whenever we have uh, perhaps taken expedient measures, they have turned around and bitten us in the backside. Abu Ghraib and other situations like that uh, are non-biodegradables. They don't go away. The enemy continues to beat you with them like a stick uh, in the Central Command area of responsibility. Beyond that, frankly, we have found that the use of the interrogation methods in the Army Field Manual that was given the force of law by Congress, uh, that that works. Well, wow, you can see why he's good in a briefing with well, yeah. the president. And this is General Petraeus's philosophy. As we know, he's an expert at counterinsurgency, uh, at what we used to call winning the hearts and minds of the people. Remember that? And that means that, that uh, you cannot be cavalier about such, uh, such tech, uh, enhanced interrogations, if you will, uh, as, uh, as waterboarding, etc. There's a larger argument going on here, Chris, between uh, uh, two philosophies of uh, approaching uh, the, the war on terror, if you will. Is, is it a war or is it an and international police action. And that is something that Dick Cheney is pushing on the war side to say anything is justified, as he said, quote unquote, I'm big on, 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 on waterboarding, or, or I'm sorry, a fan of waterboarding. And, and that's the sort of thing that, that can protect him uh, in the international community if, as, if anybody in the future decides to go after him right. for war crimes, because under, under certain interpretations of international law, he's already committed. Anything goes. Yeah. But you know, one of the, the interesting things about how Cheney was very effective in arguing the case that if you say it's just a criminal action, you don't get it, we're at war. I understand the game that's being played there, and maybe it's justified to some extent. But I could do it the other way, Michael. I could say to Dick Cheney, the former vice president, I'd say, you don't get it. Terrorism's a crime as well as a war. A tactic. Well, it's wrong to kill people in civilian right. buildings. They're wrong to use airplanes to kill people, regular civilian airlines. That's not warfare. These guys aren't combatants. Right. They're well, terrorists. Uh, they're criminals. So why not treat them as criminals once you catch them? Don't glorify them by calling them soldiers. As we speak now, Eric Holder is having a press conference with the Justice Department announcing uh, the guilty plea by this guy Zazi, who was going to try to blow up the uh, New York City subways uh, last fall on the anniversary. Yeah. He's he, uh, he's he's cooperating now with the FBI, providing important intelligence, being treated as a criminal justice suspect right. he's entered a, a guilty plea it's like graphic evidence right there right there that you can get useful intelligence and make progress by okay. using the law enforcement uh, uh, system. these are gripping fights thank you gentlemen yeah. thank you this fight between Powell and, and Petraeus was so impressive there Petraeus General Petraeus and General Powell going at Dick Cheney boy what a fight to the fit this is a twilight struggle here <laughs> Michael Isikoff Clarence Page